be allowed to bring their non-EU families to the UK. I would say EU or non-EU, it doesn't really matter. Um, my personal view on this, as the UK is heading for Brexit anyway, you can actually say anywhere but the UK. <laughs> um, my personal view on this is you have to understand why some of the rules come in. Um, a, a lot of this was basically figure fudging. Tony Blair left an open door policy relating to the EU immigration. And obviously we've had the migration um, of people along with immigrate. You know, when I say migration, we're talking about economic migration, not just people asylum seeking or whatever. Um, because as I've mentioned before, asylum seeking stops as soon as you get to a safe country. It doesn't get you to pick where you want to go. That is not how it works. Um, don't get the two confused uh, relating to foreign policy of nations and political um, acceptance of immigration. They're two different things. So whether somebody wants to economically improve their lives or escaping a war zone, they're different things. But anyway, my view on this, as a Brit, I think we're penalised. Um, we're penalised because Tony Blair opened the floodgates. He was expected to become the president of the EU, and as such, the corrupt, corrupt parasite actually went out his way to try and uh, kiss the buttocks of whoever to get what he wanted. He had no reason to accept the open policy that the UK accepted. Freedom of movement is not just freedom of moving from X, Y, Z. There is also some things that they could have been put in place related to benefits and other things which were overlooked, let's put it politely. As such, the focus was made on reducing net migration. That's the focus they put, and you'll see that's how the media put it. When they're talking net migration, they are talking about just a figure. A figure they don't even know is real or not, but the whole point is the figure. The only way to reduce that figure is targeting British nationals that have foreign, um, and as I said, EU or non-EU, doesn't really matter coming up to Brexit, to target them. Um, because they're the easiest target, because they have a British nationality, and this is why people argue that EU people have more rights than British people. They do. Without a doubt, they do. Um, but you can thank Tony Blair for doing that, and you can thank Theresa May for being a little weasel that she is, um, for not only being incompetent, but focusing only on what is available to her, which is British people, penalised British people uh, to stop them bringing their families into the UK. Now, do I think it should be an automatic right to be British? The answer to that is no. There's certain things that go on that nobody really focuses on. The first one being, well, you get newspapers do it every now and again. You get like some <laughs> council estate trash um, marrying about 10 Ni Nigerians, you know, over di married, divorced, married, divorced, married, divorced, getting them all in the country. This is a prime example of how the media focus on this stuff. Remain the Romanian kid that wheels around begging in the little box thing yet is receiving full-blown benefits and there's no reason to do it but he actually annoys so many people and he's a prime example of why people are crying out for immigration reform he had no right to be in the uk see the thing my view on it is they shouldn't be entitled to any benefits it's as simple as that and i would cancel a lot not entitled to housing nothing you shouldn't be able to come to the uk unless you can stand on your own two feet when I arrived here in Spain, I arrived with 22,000 euros in my bank account because I was supporting myself. I didn't go, where's the nearest job center? Where's the nearest social services? Um, but anyway, moving past that. I do think there has to be some understanding that if you're bringing other people from outside of wherever, um, that you have to take on responsibility, that you have to not be a burden of state. And I do think it needs to be enforced. Promising stuff does not mean it's going to happen. And I don't believe in the 18,600 rule, but I do be believe that there should be no access to um, unemployment benefits, etc. for the non-EU, etc. It should be accessible to 
the British citizen as a British citizen, but it doesn't mean that that extends to somebody's family. Um, for example, if you had a studio flat and an unemployed, guess what? You're not entitled to a three bedroom house because you've got three kids. There's nothing to say you're entitled to that. And I would agree with that. Go out there and earn it like everybody else. Um, but I would also say that I believe that a lot of people are targeted unfairly. And I do spend time with people within different groups. I actually got kicked out of one of the groups try, talking about the, the London uh, stabbing incidents because I was actually stressing the point that the demographics are a problem. And obviously I'm then branded a racist for actually quoting statistics on the crimes relating to London when they're actually facts. Um, but this is the problem. A lot of people like to pick and choose what they like. Oh, I want that. I, I met this lovely um, African man, whatever, and I should be allowed to bring him into the UK. Well, do you work? No, I'm retired. So what, hang on a minute. So who's gonna pay for him to be there? Well, well, he'll get a job. There's plenty of people in the UK with no jobs. You don't need to add more to that. Um, the whole point is on a fixed pension there and somebody that's unskilled, etc. I don't agree that they should have easy access to the UK. It doesn't mean that they should be completely blocked. You should turn around and say, well, when he goes away and comes back with something that he could actually use in the UK, not go to Birmingham University to learn something at the taxpayer's expense or whatever, but actually arrive with something of worth. Because whether we like it or not, economics is king. And like it or not, the UK does not pay its debts. The UK cannot afford to keep taking on um, more people that uh, become the benefit system, benefit Britain. doesn't need it. It needs more skilled people, it needs more doctors, um, needs more scientists, M needs people that can inject change in the country. Um, but at the same time, I do understand that some people may think that's unfair, but go and live where he is. You've got a fixed pension. You'll live like a, a queen over there or a king, you know, whether you're male or female. Um, so that's why a lot of people go to the Philippines. So a lot of people go all over the place and move out of the UK. It's, it, there's no guarantee of being able to go back to the UK. But I do agree that we are victimized. Um, myself going to the UK, if I wanted to go to the UK, I don't believe I should have to pay the amount that they want for doing some services that wasn't long ago, um, was just nowhere near as expensive, but far much easier to process um, prior to Tony Blair. <laughs> Um, so even myself, but then again, if you tied into that private medical care, so people have to have an insurance policy, the same as Spain. I agree with that. There should be no burden to the NHS. There should be no burden to social security or anybody else. But I also say that you should be allowed to work from day one of arrival because arriving in the country is acceptance that you're on the path to live there. And being on that path should allow you the ability to show your ability to survive on your own and as a couple and that the marriage is genuine, etc. In the same way, I don't agree with people that marry in one, one week and then expect to just move to the UK. Um, there's no proof of relationship. It hasn't been developed yet. You haven't been together long enough. And I know that's quite harsh for some people, but the reality is it's all those ones that abscond that are creating the problem. Now, if there was more done to stress the fact that these people have sconed um, as soon as they arrive in the country and there was more done to just deport them. I mean, I'm talking about you find them, get them on a flight that afternoon and they're gone. No, no legal system, whatever, just get rid of them. Then I would agree with you because that would actually stress the importance of the relationship, not Oh, well, I ran away from my husband because of X, Y, Z, and I got a cat, so I should be allowed to live here because I have a right of quality of life, etc. There is no right. You haven't earned it. Um, there is a privilege, and it's not white privilege because it's nothing to do with color. 
the UK is full of people from everywhere, so you can't use colour as a defence. Um, but it's a privilege to be allowed to live in the United Kingdom. And as such, it should be respected. And as I'm saying, people that use and abuse it, I'd, I'd throw them out. I don't care where they go. You know, I'd drop people off in Dubai or somewhere and just say, on your way. I don't have to send you back to where you come from. You, you broke the laws, you off you go. Um, so I would be a bit more brutal on that side, but at the same time, I think if you're a genuine relationship, etc., and if it does break down after two years or whatever, at least recognize they've had a go at it and the relationship didn't work. And that would be debatable whether somebody should stay in the UK or not based on that relationship history. Um, because if it was a as a friendly experience where the wife locks herself in the cupboard and does all this weird stuff, um, I did advise him to throw her back to the Philippines um, some time ago, <laughs> not long after they moved overseas, because I could see exactly where that was heading. Um, but the point being, if you're getting that sort of stuff, then I would recommend send them home. And I would advise that governments should be able to assist in that. But it also involves confirming the information is correct as well and not that the husband's a wife be to him just doing what he wants and suddenly decides he wants somebody new or whatever. Because I tell you what, that should go down as a little mark on your tick in the box that if you deport somebody, um, you should be recognised that you're not a good judgment of character to go and get married overseas. <laughs> um, it shouldn't be so easy to just come and go as you please, but it should also recognise the fact that, A, you should have more privilege as a British citizen um, to be able to access your own country and not victimise because you're British, because it's much easier than victimising people from the EU. Um, because it's caused a lot of separations of families. And a lot of families are financially viable. A lot of families can take care of themselves. A lot of people have been stuck in limbo um, because of the way the government organisations work. Um, so as a British national, I think we should have more rights to bring our own families to the UK. But I do recognise that if, for example, I lived in the Philippines for a decade with my wife and kids, it should be an automatic right to coming to the UK. Because there's a proof of relationship, proof of marriage, proof of existence, etc. Um, but also, financially, Philippines doesn't give me nothing. If I can survive in the Philippines without a pension or anything else, then I'll tell you what, the UK, a home country, is nothing. Um, it's so easy to do. Because you have to have the right thoughts and the right path to make it work. Um, I've mentioned Paul before. Paul... I met a long time ago, um, then met years later. He, he was like, he's quite a rough guy. Um, and he was used to just going from day to day. He wasn't really fussed about work or anything else. And then he met this uh, girl from Thailand. When I m met him the first time, his whole life had changed. And this was just sat over lunch and he was telling me about it because he wanted to fit the criteria which was the six months pay slips having a regular job having a permanent contract all this stuff so he changed from being somebody that was unreliable to being fully compliant and wanting a future with his wife they now live in the uk um they're a happily married couple got two kids um he's committed to work she's committed to work and they're committed to each other um, but the whole point is, that criteria, they said, get a job, show you can look after yourself, show where you're going to live, do that sort of stuff, I agree with. Because you have to put in place the ability to not be a burden of state. Um, which is why some people go about the 186 rule, and I agree with the 186 rule. I, well, sorry, I agree that the 186 rule is a bad thing. Because I know in some of the other areas, um, if you go out to some of the communities out in Wales or uh, down on the Devon coast and stuff, that's a lot of money. I remember talking to a friend a while back and I didn't even realize people were still getting paid £12,000 a year because um, I hadn't been paid that since, my, since I was probably about 19. 
Um, so the, the point being is there's a lot of areas that 18.6 is a lot of money in those areas. But the houses and stuff are also in line with their cheaper cost of living. So the whole point is the 18.6 rule has not taken into account regional information that the fact is you can live quite happily on less than 12,000 a year in some of these areas because of the, the way the zone is. You know, that area doesn't have a lot of job opportunities, but it has very little cost as well. Um, and some of these areas could do with some people in them. Um, but what I find bizarre is they target this 18.6 rule, yet let so many people migrate to central London. I mean, my goodness, I don't know how many Brits actually live. You know, when I say Brits, I'm talking about there's, there's a lot of asylum seekers, there's a lot of people from other countries living there. But how many Brits actually still live in London? So my, uh, even from that point of view, I would actually say, as long as you can support yourself, do not want any benefits and can show that you, you know, like if you went, well, I normally do window cleaning or whatever it is in this area, this is what I do. I pay my taxes, da da da. I can look after myself. Lived in my own house for the last 20 years. No burden to stay. Fine, go for it. In the same way, I'd bring in a skill matrix as well. Because if you've got an expat like myself that has skills that the UK needs and our wage bracket is above 50,000 a year anyway, um, then we'll never be a burden to stay because we're not even entitled to child benefit. <laughs> we're entitled to nothing. Um, so the point being is, financially, they tax us to death anyway. They're actually getting more than we put um, take out the system in any form. So from that point of view, a skill matrix would be important. I don't agree with some of the rules relating to some of the um, criteria within this fixed period for nurses and things. I think that's just mental um, because they're filling a specific role. So... I assume that some people get affected by that if they're married to a British national. Because I've had a couple of conversations around this where whether people should apply as a couple or their wife should apply as a nurse in the UK. And then they become a couple because of trying to get the system to work where it's not going to hinder them. Um, and I do think the government has got a lot of work to do to assist people in doing their paperwork. Um, because I do think if some of this was explained better and put into a better structure for the government as well as the people concerned, it would have be beneficial to all concerned. Um, instead of right now, it's a, become a bit of them and us, which is not beneficial to anybody. So my view is, shouldn't be an automatic right to the UK, but... I don't believe in the 186 rule. Um, I do think a lot of people can live on less than that. Um, I do also think that if you, even if you're still living with your parents um, and they've got a four bedroom council house and you, there's only your dad living there or whatever, then fine. If your dad's happy you're living there and he gives you all the documentation to support it, that's fine. I don't think people have to go and get a three bedroom house or something just because they're being told to. It's just utter craziness. Um, but anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Thanks for watching.